Okay, we have a lot of invisible ones in math. I want you guys to write the number seven. Okay. Who knows where the invisible one is? It's underneath it. Seven over one, and I want you to use your highlighters for the invisibles. Randy, computer. There's more than that, but we're gonna leave it at that for now. As far as what's around this seven, there's lots more invisibles. <clears throat> the reason we're talking about this today is we are gonna start working with subtracting integers. So I'd like you to write down 7 minus 3. What grade did you learn how to solve that? First grade. First grade. With counters that you put 7 and pulled 3 away? Yeah. Things like that? And how many would have been left? 4. Okay, we're going to rewrite this with the invisibles. So underneath it, put that 7. There's an invisible plus in front of it. There's another invisible plus after it. I did not mean to make my pluses all bigger. <laughs> they look like that got bigger as the problem went on. <clears throat> seven is positive. That's what that invisible plus in front of it means. When it's in the front of a problem, we usually just don't put the plus there because we are assuming it is positive and we like shortcuts in math. <clears throat> the four is also positive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This plus means something different. This means and. So you would read this as seven and negative three. What your first grade teacher did not tell you when they were teaching you how to take away is that you were starting to work with negatives. How would we show this on a number line? We would start at seven and we would take away three and that would, I went back too far, <laughs> and we would end up at four, right? When we reverse on the number line, we're going the opposite direction, and that's what we're doing when we're subtracting. Ty, could you get that? I would like you to then say negative, let's do the opposite, negative three, plus seven. Um, I'll have to call them back. Negative three plus seven. On the number line, it starts differently. It starts at zero and goes to negative three. And then we would go to the right seven places and end up at four. This time, because I put the negative three in front, the negative sign is there, and the plus sign is there. This plus sign is there for two reasons. It's saying negative three and seven, but it's implying also that this is what kind of seven? Positive. positive. And what kind of answer is the answer, positive, positive. or negative? Positive. Okay. I'm gonna do one that ends up as a negative before we move into our agile mind. <clears throat> Let's do negative 3 plus negative 8. Notice where I've got this plus in the middle here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to surround this negative 8 in parentheses. And the only reason we do that is so we don't have two symbols right next to each other. Because if you write too quickly, they can get lost. <clears throat> the other way I could have written this, and I'm going to say equals because this equals the same thing negative 3 minus 8. And let's draw what that would look like on our number line. Starting at 0, 
I'm going to go left to negative 3. And then what do I do? Go, go, left. go farther left. Eight places until I get to what? Eight, negative, 11. 11. negative 11. So this one has an invisible. It has an invisible plus that would be here. And our answer ends up being negative 11. <clears throat> so the last one I want to do before we turn on, get into Agile Mind, and we're going to do it on my screen first, so you're going to keep your computers closed. What if I have five, negative five, minus a negative eight? There's an invisible here. We'll talk about it in a second. What I want you to think about though, what's going to happen when I start with negative 5 on the number line? I'm going to go to the left. So I'm starting at 0 always, and I'm going to go to the left 5 places. Our negatives are telling us we go to the left. What happens when we have two negatives? Talk at your table real quick. I'm hearing mostly what I'm hoping to hear. Let's have some conversation. How many people think you would keep going to the left because we have negatives? How many people think we'd go to the right? Tracy, can you say why? Say that louder. They don't cancel each other out. I've heard that before, though. And I know where that's coming from. <clears throat> Who's heard that two negatives make a positive? Sort of. We had two negatives up here, and we got another negative. So do two negatives always make a positive? No, but Tracy's kind of onto something when she says that they cancel. That's a phrase that's been used around math. <clears throat> Ty? When a negative subtracts a negative, basically you're doing the opposite. Instead of going left, I would reverse and go right. We're doing the opposite action with these two. But can I tell you the real reason? There's an invisible one here. Right there. And I don't know why we always, 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 every math book I've taught this out of has addition and subtraction of integers come before multiplication and division. But when I multiply a negative times a negative, I get a positive because it's reversing, right? And I think that's what you meant by the canceling. So this negative one is gonna get multiplied by negative eight. And we would rewrite this as negative five plus eight. They mean the same thing. Oops, you guys didn't tell me I wrote an 8 down here. I meant 5. So then I'm going to go to the right 8 places, and where am I going to land? 3. Okay, so with that, 